Hello and welcome to Sats Comprehensive. My name is Ken Gaudi and in this video we will look at some tips, some exercises and some products that will help you to develop your embouchure and hopefully as a result improve your tone. We will also look at the aspect of lip pain because lip pain can be a direct consequence of your embouchure. Now I have done another video before looking at the formation of the embouchure, looking at the single lip embouchure and the double lip embouchure, looking at where to place your bottom teeth for the ideal sound, how to form your lips around the mouthpiece, etc., and much, much more. So if you're looking for a video that's going to teach you how to form your embouchure, then that will be a good starting place for you. I'll put a link to that video above. This video, we want to go one step further and try and improve the embouchure that you've adopted. So let's get started. When a beginner starts to play the saxophone, what they would do is take the mouthpiece, put it in their mouths, close their mouths around the mouthpiece to create a seal, and then start playing. And that's fine because the mouth is closed, you've created a seal and you should be able to play with a decent tone. However, if you were to concentrate more on where you are actually applying the lip pressure around the mouthpiece, you might be able to open up your sound and produce a better tone. So what do I mean by this? Well, basically there are two ways in which you can apply lip pressure to the mouthpiece. The first way is in a vertical direction, so basically closing or opening up our lips. Now, the muscles around our face that causes us to close and open our mouths are quite strong. Because we're used to doing it, we're used to closing and opening our mouths when we eat and when we talk, etc. So the muscles are quite developed. And so it's easy for us to apply pressure in a vertical direction. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's so easy to bite. The second way of applying lip pressure around the mouthpiece is in a horizontal direction. So moving the corners of our lips in. Now, the muscles that causes us to bring our corners of our lips in are less developed because obviously we don't do that a lot. We don't usually in our daily routine cause uh, the corners of our lips to move in. But that's what you want to do. You want to squeeze in the corners of your lips around the mouthpiece because what that's going to do is going to cause your lower lip to get fatter and fuller and therefore when the reed is on a fuller and fatter lower lip it will vibrate better and also if you squeeze in the corners of your lips it will also release the pressure the lip pressure in a vertical direction so less biting down which is something that you want now some musicians will just squeeze in the corners of their lips some musicians will squeeze in the corner of their lips and push their lips forward. Some will squeeze in the corners of their lips and move the corners of their lips up. So they will use their cheek muscles to bring the corners of their lips in and up. So they have a kind of a wince um, formation on their face. Now it's just a matter of you to experiment, squeeze in your lips and experiment on what creates a better, a better sound for you. But the problem for the beginner is actually squeezing in the corners of the lips because the muscles are not developed to squeeze in the corners of the lips. So when a beginner tries to squeeze in the corner of the lips, they may not be able to do it and therefore not be able to benefit from the opening up of their sound. Or if they can squeeze in the corners of their lips and create a better sound, they may not be able to hold it for very long because the muscles will tire and then obviously you lose the embouchure. Uh, and therefore you, you will lose the tone. So what you're going to need to do is have some exercises or use some products that will develop your embouchure so that you'll have the strength to squeeze in the corners of your lips. Now, to start off, if you play the saxophone quite a lot, then your embouchure will naturally get stronger, it will just naturally get stronger. And if you play the saxophone and while playing you try to squeeze in the corners of your lips, then again your embouchure will get stronger because you're actually exercising your embouchure. So when you're practicing, try and squeeze in the corners of your lips and that will actually develop your embouchure. But there are some exercises that you can do that will actually strengthen your embouchure in a horizontal direction and also there are some exercises that will allow you to release the lip pressure in the vertical direction, which will stop you from biting down. So let's look at some of these exercises. An exercise that you could try that would develop your embouchure overall is to get a pen or a pencil, a round-ended pen or pencil, 
and place it between your lips and hold it straight out. Make sure it doesn't touch your teeth. So I'm just holding this pen straight out with just my lips. Now, as your lips get tired, the pen or pencil will begin to fall down. When that happens, have a break and then come back a little later and try it again and then develop your exercise routine for the development of your embouchure. I have seen it done with a flat ended spoon, but if you're going to use a spoon, then make sure it's not a heavy spoon. You want something that has, has the weight of a pen or a pencil. Now remember, the ex these exercises is something that's going to be a long term thing. So don't expect to do it in over a few days for you to experience a difference. Maybe over a month, a few months, try it out and see if it makes any improvement to your embouchure. And if not, then try one of these other examples that I'm going to give. Another exercise that you can try that will develop your embouchure, especially in this horizontal direction, squeezing in the corners of your lips. And that is just to basically squeeze in your lips and then release your lips and just keep on doing that. It's known as the QT exercise because basically you're squeezing your lips as if you were pronouncing the letter Q and then you release your lips as if you were pronouncing the letter T. So Q, T. And if you squeeze it in with sufficient force and then you pull your lips out with sufficient force, then that will begin to cause your lip muscles to tire and then obviously you, you'll be giving it a workout and exercising your embouchure. When developing any muscle groups, you get better results when you use resistance. For instance, if I'm exercising my biceps, if I did that every day, then, you know, I would get some improvement as my muscles tire out. But then if I use some resistance, such as this, if I did that, then obviously I would get stronger muscles. So with this QT exercise, uh, there are some products that will actually apply some resistance to it. So when you squeeze in, you're squeezing against some resistance and therefore get a better workout and make improvements faster. One such product is called the U-Trainer. I have done a, a review of this one. I will put a link to it above if you want to see more about this product. Basically, it's a scissors-like product. You squeeze in the top and at the bottom, you've got these elastic bands, which they call O-rings, which actually will apply the resistance. And then you've got these two little grooves in the top bit. So basically what you do, you'd put it in the corners of your mouse. This will obviously try to push your corners of your mouse out. And then obviously you're gonna squeeze against the resistance by pushing it in. So. So it's basically the same thing, the QT exercise, but this will actually add some resistance to it, make it harder for you to do. You can actually increase the resistance by adding more O-rings or elastic bands at the bottom to make it more difficult for you. And that will obviously strengthen your embouchure as well. Some other exercises that you can do to develop your tone and your embouchure. The first one is known as long tones. Now I have done a video on that. And if you watch a lot of videos, you will find that Different people have different ideas about what is a long tone. Some individuals see a long tone as being something that you play for a long period of time. So you play a note for as long as you can. And each time you play the note, you're trying to get longer and longer. So you're trying to build up your ability to play a note for as long as you can. Now, there are other groups of individuals that consider a long tone as not necessarily being something that you play for a long period of time. So you get a metronome, you set yourself a time frame and you play the note within that time frame. And what you're trying to do is produce the best sound possible within that time frame. So you may decide you want to do a metronome of four clicks and you play the note and you listen carefully to the sound. You want to make sure that it's in tune. So you might want to have a tuner. Make sure it's in tune and make sure that the quality of the note remains the same throughout that length of time. 
Now, if the note begins to falter, then you just stop and then you start again. You're not so much worried about how long you play the note, but the quality of the note. You wanna make sure that there's no wavering in the note as you're actually playing it. Another exercise is to play overtones and overtone matching. Now I've done a video on overtones if you wanna know what they are. So basically you will finger a low note, so maybe a low B flat, a B, a C, a C sharp or a D. You finger that low note, but you play it as if you were playing a higher note. So you finger the low note, but then you manipulate your throat and your tongue, put them in a particular position so that you can play all of the other notes within that harmonic series. And that will actually help you to produce good quality sounding notes. And then when you do overtone matching, that's basically playing the overtone and playing the normal note and trying to get them to sound more alike together. So they both sound like the overtone note and the normal note. Another exercise that you can do is the reverse of this and some people call this undertoning. So instead of overtoning, it's undertoning. So basically what you do here is you finger a note with the octave key pressed down, but then you're gonna try and sound the lower notes. So for instance, if you were to play A with the octave key, and then you keep the octave key pressed down, but then you sound the note, which is the A without the octave key. So you hold the octave key in and try and sound that lower note with the octave key pressed in. Now that's very difficult to do. It's a lot easier to play overtones. So you finger a low note without the octave key, but you sound the higher notes within the harmonic series. But when you do the reverse, the undertoning, and you hold the octave key in and try to sound the lower notes, then it's a lot more difficult to do. But it's something that you could try and obviously that will also develop your opening up of your throat and obviously help you with producing a good tone. Now let's move on to some exercises that will develop our embouchure and reduce the amount of lip pressure in the vertical direction and therefore reduce the effect of biting and move on to looking at lip pain because one of the main causes of lip pain is biting. So if we could do some exercises that will reduce the lip pressure in the vertical direction, then obviously that will help us from biting. Now, when I first started playing the saxophone, I suffered quite a bit from lip pain, especially from biting when I was trying to learn those overtones and trying to learn those autissimo notes, I would bite down quite a bit on the mouthpiece. Even if I knew what I was doing, and consciously tried not to buy it within a few minutes of trying to play those overtimes, overtones, it would just creep in and I would find myself within a few minutes that I was biting down. And I used to bite down with such force that on my bottom lip, I would actually feel the indentation of my teeth. So I left my lower teeth print in my lower lip. Uh, there was also a time when I had too much of my bottom lip in my mouth and so my teeth were resting on the lower bit of my lip, the inside, the fleshy part. And because my teeth are sharp, it just actually ripped that apart after a session and uh, had to wait a week for that to heal before I could start playing again. Um, I played with a synthetic reed and as I took the reed out, instead of opening up my mouth, I just took it out and uh, the side of the synthetic reed rubbed against my lip and gave me a paper cut. So that wasn't too good. There were times when I would practice for long periods of time. I would just practice, practice, practice without a break, just playing notes one after the other. And then after a long session, realized that the uh, reed had stuck to my bottom lip. It was actually stuck on there. And I had to carefully remove it from my bottom lip, hoping that it didn't take some skin off. That happened quite a number of times. And uh, there was a time when every time I'd put the mouthpiece in my mouth and started playing, there was immediate pain. As soon as I started playing, within that first few minutes, there was pain. If I continued playing, then my, numb, my lips would go numb and uh, I wouldn't feel the pain and I could continue with the practice session, which is not something that I would recommend. But during that time, as soon as I put the mouthpiece in and started playing, I would feel pain straight away. And so I had to learn how to overcome that. So let's look at some of these exercises. These next few exercises require you to form your embouchure in an abnormal way. 
And that way when you play your saxophone with your embouchure formed in this abnormal way and then go back to playing your saxophone with your regular uh, formation of your embouchure, you'll find that your embouchure is more relaxed and you'll find that you want to push more air through the saxophone. The first exercise does away with the tension in the top lip. Now when you buy what happens is that you're actually squeezing your jaw together, so it bites, or you're squeezing your lips tighter together. Now if there's no top lip then there's nothing for the bottom lip to push against, there's no support to push against and therefore it's, it's harder to bite. So if we eliminate the top lip then it makes it more difficult for you to apply pressure with your bottom lip and therefore reduce the tension in that vertical direction. So how do we release the tension in the top lip? How do we remove the top lip? Well, basically what you do, you'll play the saxophone, but you'll lift the top lip off the mouthpiece using your facial muscles. So you put your mouthpiece in your mouth and then try and lift the top lip off. You may, um, create a funny face when you're doing that. But the idea is to lift this top lip up and then try and play. It'll become very breathy and it may be difficult for you to play, but once you practice and get a hang of it, you'll find that you need to change your embouchure in order to play the notes and that will actually help you when you go back to playing with your normal embouchure. <laughs> find it difficult to lift your top lip using your muscles and your lip just constantly just rests on top of the mouthpiece you can't lift it up then you could use your right hand and lift it up with your right hand finger and then use your left hand to play a few of the notes <laughs> The only problem with that is that you don't get to play the full range of the saxophone, you can only play the notes with your left hand so that kind of limits you. There is a product out there which will actually lift your top lip for you and it's called the Urus Trainer, Ambusha Trainer and here it is this plastic uh, thing that you put, you connect it to your mouthpiece, it's got these lips at the top which your top lip will rest on so these bits at the top will actually lift up your top lip for you so you don't need to worry about um, lifting it up with your muscles. It's probably best if you've got a second mouthpiece then you just attach it to that mouthpiece and just keep it on there rather than taking it off and then putting it back and trying to find the correct place to put this uh, Urus uh, embouchure trainer because uh, it has to be in a certain place for you. So if you've got a second mouthpiece Put it on there, keep it on there and use this practice and then use your other mouthpiece when you play regularly. The next exercise that you could try, I saw this on a channel called the Saxophone Oracle. It's kind of similar to what I just explained but in this case you open up your embouchure using a old reed. So basically what you do, you take an old reed and you put it on top of the mouthpiece patch. So here where the mouthpiece patch is, you just lay the uh, reed over it like that. And then you put your teeth on top of the reed. So basically you're playing with an open up, an opened up embouchure. So you put the reed on top of the mouthpiece patch, put your teeth on top of the reed. And try and form an embouchure like that and then try and play. What you're going to find, there's lots of gaps at the side there, so you're going to obviously try and form your embouchure around in order to play the notes, and it's going to be very breathy, and it means you're going to have to force more air through to get the notes. So this is one exercise that would actually help you to improve your breathing and to blow more air through the saxophone. Once you're able to blow notes and you can practice like that, then when you go back to your normal embouchure, you'll find that you're blowing more air through the saxophone and you have a more relaxed embouchure. So now a quick
quickly, the last few exercises I want to talk about is just playing on your mouthpiece alone, which will actually help improve your embouchure. Now, the first one is just trying to produce the correct pitch for the mouthpiece. Now, there is the idea that each mouthpiece of the saxophone has its own unique pitch. So for the alto mouthpiece, it should be an A. So if you took your mouthpiece and just blew a note, you should be getting an A. If you don't, then maybe you're biting too much or your embouchure is too loose. If I took this particular mouthpiece and blew a note, it would come out as B flat. But then I could adjust my throat, adjust my tongue, adjust the lip pressure and produce an A. So the idea behind it is that whichever mouthpiece you're using and the different pitches for the different saxophones, but on an alto saxophone, you try and form your embouchure to create an A. Once you can do that, you put your mouthpiece onto the saxophone and keep the same formation of your embouchure when you produce an A. And then when you blow all of the notes in the saxophone, all of those notes will be at their optimum because you're actually blowing into the saxophone the pitch of the mouthpiece. And that's the idea behind it. The other exercise is to play scales on the mouthpiece. Now, this is a bit difficult to do. Uh, you should be able to move down a few semitones, but then to produce a whole octave uh, will take some time to do that. So take your mouthpiece, start at the pitch that comes out, whatever it is, whether it's an A, whether it's a B flat, and then try and move down a semitone at a time, going down lower and lower, and over um, a period of a year or two, you may be able to produce a whole octave and even play melodies on just the mouthpiece alone. Now playing on the mouthpiece alone can be quite noisy and I'm sure you probably have done it before and realize that there is a product called the Jazz Lab Silencer which you put onto your mouthpiece and then play it like that and this silencer reduces the sound coming out of the mouthpiece. Um, it's a, it's a decent product, but I find that uh, it's a lot easier to play the different notes with just the mouthpiece alone than with the mouthpiece and the silencer, because it actually, I think the silencer for me re restricts the um, amount of um, different notes that you can actually produce. But I actually use it because in my, uh, my house, I've got some neighbors over there and I don't really want to disturb them. So I practice with the, the silencer. Now let's talk a little bit about lip pain and how to overcome the problem of lip pain. Now lip pain usually comes because of biting, applying too much pressure with the jaw or with the lips and your lower teeth digging into your lower lip, maybe even leaving your teeth imprints in your lower lip. Now what you could do is just cover over your lower teeth, especially if it's jagged. Now, what you're covered with, there are various products. Some people may start off with paper, and some suggest that um, cigarette paper is good. So basically, all that you would do is just fold it into a shape that makes it easy for you to just put over your bottom teeth. So here, I folded a cigarette paper like this, and then when I wet it, it becomes pliable. And then I should be able to just go over my bottom teeth. And then when I put the map is in there, then I've got that barrier between my lower teeth and, and the, uh, my lower lip. So then my teeth don't directly hit my lip, it's got that barrier of paper. But as I said before, paper, once it gets wet, even cigarette paper will begin to deteriorate. It may begin to rip and tear off. You may need to um, uh, make a new one uh, now and again. A more durable substance for cutting and putting it over your lip could be some dental cushions. So there's a product called Iso Dental Cushion. You just cut it and then that will fold over your teeth and it's more durable. So it will last for a few days. You could go one step further and get a mouth guard 
that your dentist will make for you. Now I haven't got a mouth guard to show you, but I do have a night guard, which is this thing here. Now, this is for people that uh, are very stressed out and at night time when they sleep, they bite so forcefully that they're gonna crack their teeth. So the dentist will make you a night guard. This one goes over your top teeth. So when you sleep at night, then it actually prevents you from clenching down with your teeth and, and cracking your, your teeth. But obviously you could go to the dentist and get one for your lower teeth done. Sort of like that. And that would cover over your lower teeth. And it would actually be made for the, your, your particular teeth. So if your teeth are broken or jagged, they will be made for your teeth and therefore will fit you comfortably and nicely. And that will actually perform a barrier between your teeth and your lower lip and prevent the lip pain there. So this is a good, good choice, but obviously it is um, somewhat expensive. You could go to Drastic Root and get your dentist to shave down your teeth to make it more smooth. But then there's only so much teeth that he could re remove and smooth it out. So maybe try paper, maybe get a dental guard, which may cost you quite some money. You might be able to get some of these cheap ones from um, a sports shop, which might work. But these ones um, are made for your, actual, for your actual teeth. They'll actually make a mold of your teeth and then they'll actually make these things for you. So it's personal. The last thing to say when it comes to lip pain, which is quite obvious, take breaks. Obviously, Charlie Parker, so it's claimed, played for 15 hours a day. So if you're going to practice 15 hours a day, then obviously you're going to take breaks. Don't just play 15 hours straight and expect your lip to be in good condition. So ever so often, maybe every half an hour or so, have a break, give your lip a rest. And if you do cut your lip or if you are experiencing some pain, then uh, take some time out to give your lip time to heal. Because if you've cut your lip and you continue practicing, you may run the risk of permanent damage, which is something that you don't want to do. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful with all of those exercises. Now, personally, I do not do all of those exercises, but I did it there as a complete guide for things that you can obviously try to help you out. Some things may work for you, some things may not. Um, some things you're gonna have to try over a long period of time, give it a few months to see if it's actually helping before trying something else. I wish you all the best. If you found this video helpful, then give it a thumbs up as usual. And if you're not yet a subscriber, then consider subscribing to this channel. And uh, I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.